Hello and welcome to our worship this morning with Christchurch South Osset online. We're so glad that you've joined us for worship today and uh, if it's your first time sharing worship with us then welcome if you've been worshipping with us for a number of weeks now it's really good to have you back. Let's Let's worship together. So let's confess our sins using the words of this confession. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. The almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon and forgiveness for all our sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're going to worship together in song. Whether you choose to sing along or whether you choose to reflect on the words of this uh, song, let's worship our Saviour together. is 
So here on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we have a candle for the patriarchs, a candle for the prophets, a candle for John the Baptist, and the candle we're lighting today represents Mary, whose faithful obedience when she was asked to do something important made it possible for the Son of God to be born one of us. Good morning. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, starting at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings! You who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will have no end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. The phrase, in the beginning, conjures up two possible endings for me. In the beginning, God created the world. Or, in the beginning was the word. So, whichever way we look at it, our thoughts this week are directed before John the Baptist, before Gabriel visited Mary. In fact, before everything, when there was just God and God was. Staying with beginnings, Advent is the beginning of the liturgical year in Western Christianity. And even though that makes sense, I've never really considered the impact of that before. We were new at the beginning of the year, thinking ahead toward what is to come and reflecting on the year past, although perhaps in many respects there isn't much of 2020 we want to reflect on. Advent inspires both on a magnificent scale. Looking back means celebrating the coming of God's Messiah, a man who would buy us out of the stronghold of sin, coming as an utterly helpless baby, born in a place strange to his parents, in the indignity of an animal area, and thankfully very clean ones if the uh, Christmas cards are to be believed. What a celebration that should be, Emmanuel, God is with us. Looking forward means anticipating the coming of that same Messiah, this time to judge the people of the world and restore his kingdom. And his kingdom is not reserved for quiet solemnity, boredom and do-gooders, by the way. The heaven we are rescued for is about joy, awe, 
celebration, love and much, much more. Not only will there be no more sorrow or pain, there will also be no more deceit, bad news, struggle, anxiety, stress, exhaustion, pressure, despair or evil. This is the world God truly desires for us. And we cannot have one of these without the other. We can't have the past without the future and we can't have the future without the past. God created the world for us to be in a relationship with him. And that's not much of a relationship unless you can choose whether to be in it or not. So he gave us that choice. And being allowed to choose meant that darkness could be allowed in. And it was. Because of that darkness, whether a little or a huge amount, that creator God became a man with the freedom to choose himself. Whether he would choose sin or righteousness, whether he would choose himself or the cross, whether he would choose our redemption or his escape. And every time he chose to bring us back to him, no matter what the cost. So we know that Advent starts our year journeying with Christ by looking back at the birth of a saviour and by looking forward to the second coming when we can be assured of our redemption because we have accepted our need of that child in a manger and what his life would mean. So let's quickly remind ourselves of the meaning of hope. In everyday English, hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for something to happen. Wishful thinking, um, being optimistic, uh, let's hope for the best. But in biblical terms, it shows certainty, the confident expectation of what God has promised. And the strength of the hope is God's faithfulness. So our Advent hope is a reflection of God's promised Messiah being born to Mary, coming into his world to redeem his children through the exchange of his life for ours, reflected each year and indeed every day of every year through the mirror of Advent so that we can also look forward and see his return and rest our hope on him and in him. In the beginning, God was. I'd never realised until I was preparing this talk that the phrase in the beginning fills me with peace. It takes away the hustle and bustle and it takes away the struggle. People against people, people against the earth, violence, hunger, deceit, doubt, despair, greed, all that is gone. It's just God. Only God. In the beginning, only God. And God is enough. In our reading, God is enough for Mary. In verse 38, she needs nothing more than to know that he has it all in hand. She has hope, the certainty, of God's faithfulness. The fact that she faces future pain, known and unknown, does not appear to matter to her. She gives God the go-ahead. Her act of free will is to make God Lord of her life, her future. But we have other beginnings here. The beginning of a child's life, the beginning of a New Testament, the part of God's word that teaches a personal relationship with God, brought about by Jesus' act of reconciliation. The beginning of the Christian church. And beginnings are about hope for the future. And they're also about a fresh start, um, laying foundations, stripping back the unnecessary, the surplus, and starting from scratch. And all of these must apply to us as we start our new year, focusing on our hope our redemption and our future. 
And let's also think about John chapter 1, verse 1. I mentioned it earlier. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word became flesh. That Word is our hope. That Word is our advent. He is everything, and he made himself nothing, a servant king. But the promises in verse 32 and 33 of our reading, he will be great and will be called son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. He will be great, incontestably great. He will be called Son of the Most High, the same nature as the Father. He is himself God over all. God will give him David's throne. And she was of the house of David. And he will bring forth an heir to that throne, not from man, but God will give him the right to rule. He will reign forever. His kingdom will be spiritual and unshakable. Do we hold that hope? Not wishful thinking, but a confident expectation. Do you? This is the last Sunday in Advent 2020. And so we may perhaps find ourselves prepared to celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, knowing the purpose of his life and his purpose for our lives and preparing for a second arrival of Emmanuel, our hope for tomorrow and for a kingdom that has no end. If you would like to talk to someone about heaven, a place full of joy or celebration, peace, rest and good things, without stress, deceit, trouble, exhaustion, pressure and anxiety, we would love to share more with you. Contact us using whichever method you prefer. The details are shown at the end of the service and we will get back to you. Now let's have a look at this prayer. This is how I want to uh, round everything up. Take a look at it. Have a read through. And when I pray this prayer, I invite you to say it along with me. You can choose not to. You can choose not to say it out loud, but to join with me saying Amen at the end. It's like putting your signature at the end of uh, a contract or a, um, a, a document that says, yes, this is something I agree with too. Or leave it. Maybe you've got questions before you want to pray that prayer. Things you want to sort out. Or maybe you just don't feel ready yet. Let's take a moment to pray together. May the God of hope prepare us for the return of Emmanuel. May we have confidence in the knowledge that once we accept the forgiveness offered to us by Jesus through his death and resurrection, we can know his love and live in his kingdom even after we die. Hold us close to you, Lord. Amen. Amen. In the reading today, we heard the words 
of the angel to Mary, nothing is impossible with God. With that in mind, let's pray and bring our needs to him. Lord, we thank you that the COVID vaccinations are now taking place with over 130,000 given in the UK in, this, in the first week. We pray for all those involved in getting the vaccine to those who need it, for those making it, distributing it, and those giving the injections. Lord, we ask that you would help them to work efficiently and well together. We also pray for those of us waiting for the vaccine, both in this country and around the world. Lord, help us to keep our hope and trust in you. Lord, we're frustrated that the Brexit deal has not yet been agreed, and we continue to pray for all those involved in the negotiations, that you would help them to find a way forward and avoid major disruption. We particularly pray for businesses trying to plan for the year ahead, that you would guide them. And Lord, as, as we light candles at this time of year, help us to remember among all the difficulties of life that you said, I am the light of the world. We particularly pray for that light to be seen by those who are unwell at this time. For David, our vicar, Mike, Rod, Bridget, Elizabeth, and all those others known to us by name. At this time of Advent, we thank you that you can do what is seemingly impossible. So Lord, we bring all these prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen.
good morning and welcome to our three minute think for the fourth Sunday in Advent. Some of you might remember that a few years ago on a messy Advent Sunday we made one of these. I hope you can see that clearly enough. It was an Advent wreath uh, about a meter across I think and in the sections there you can see the patriarchs, the prophets, John the Baptist and Mary who we're thinking about today and then Jesus at the top and everybody made little ones out of paper plates uh, with lots of that green crinkly tissue paper and it all got very messy but thinking about those four uh, people or groups of people that we have the tradition of remembering uh, during Advent that's not what everybody does some churches have different traditions and in some churches they have the tradition of letting the four candles represent love, joy, peace and hope. So what I thought we would do today is make ourselves an Advent candle that helps us to remember those four things. So here's what you need first of all. You need to draw yourself one of these and you can see that across the bottom it's 15 centimeters up the side it's 21 centimeters so that each uh, column is three centimeters wide and then you can see I've drawn flames on the top and then after that you need to write in four of the columns those four things peace hope joy and love and you can see at the top of mine I've just rounded the corners of the candles off a little bit and then you need to colour it in so it looks like this and cut it out and you can see the tops of my candles are, are a little bit rounded and I've coloured the flames in and then what you need to do very carefully is fold down each of these black lines that are between each of the words. The easiest way to do it is to score very gently with a craft knife down each of those. But if you're careful and haven't got one of those, you can fold them just as well. So then it will fold round and become a candle and what you do is on the back of one end you put some glue I've got double-sided sellotape here which is the best invention for crafters ever and then fold it round and stick it down and then that will stand on any surface you want it to stand on put it on a mantelpiece put it on your Christmas table put it somewhere where you can see it to remind us of the peace that passes understanding the hope that is steadfast and certain the joy that strengthens and fills our hearts and the love that never fails and never ends all of which come from Jesus happy Christmas Uh, one notice from me is that um, today we are going to be sharing uh, in Wakefield Cathedral's carol service online. So if you would like to find that on YouTube, uh, you simply need to search for Wakefield Cathedral um, and it's online this afternoon at 3.30pm, I believe. We also have services coming up over the coming week something special is coming up I believe there is a Chris Dingle uh, service that you can access through our channel um, on Thursday at 3 p.m. Um, that's our Chris Dingle uh, service so please do consider joining us for that and um, we also have service in church on Christmas Day at 10 a.m which will be a communion service uh, please book if you want to join us for that it's using uh, details um, contact details for the parish office 
and then you are also invited to join us online um, for our online Christmas uh, morning worship which you can access in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, whenever you would like to. So it's going to be really good to share services with you this week uh, and to celebrate the coming of our Saviour Emmanuel. Good morning. This is an important announcement from the online service team. This has been a very difficult time for us all. And since June, you've had an online service to control the congregation, protect the vicar and save a warden. You told us you rewound the good bits and fast forward the bad bits, but that doesn't matter. We've all got to come together to save Christmas. And together, we can succeed. Now we ask that you keep watching the online service, have a happy Christmas, and fa la 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 la. This is a Christmas message for the professional online service team. We you a Merry Christmas. I'll go then. Christmas to you. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year too. Well, that went as well as could be expected.
Christmas, Christchurch. The midnight is light and the morning is clear. The daytime is bright and when he draweth near, and voices are telling the same tidings still of peace that is dwelling with men.
thank you for being with us today. And we hope that you will join us again over the course of the coming week when there are celebrations aplenty. I'm going to say a blessing over all of us as we have gathered together as one family, the family of God. And we acknowledge that his blessings over us. Christ, the son of righteousness, shine upon us. Scatter the darkness from before our path and make us ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Please remember to contact us at any time over the coming week or beyond using any of the contact details that you see on the card at the end. Happy Christmas. <laughs>